Hey, okay, so um, we're going to be moving on to rivers. I wanted to first point out that um, these notes were actually, it's called water erosion notes, and I, I shared a link um, for you to get these notes. I apologize, but they were not part of your um, notes packet. So um, this, later on, you'll just submit this separately. Um, but you'll, we're going to be starting with um, how these rivers are formed, and then we'll end with... Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the different types of landforms that are created by rivers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And you're going to be typing these notes into, um, it's called water erosion notes. And the very first line, it says the active river. Okay, so as we're talking about erosion and deposition by rivers, like I said, you have to first know how they form. So we're going to first talk about how they form the different um, stages of a river, you might say. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about the different landforms that are created by them. Okay, so erosion, again, is simply just that process by which um, sediment is moved from one area to an, from one area to another. Okay, so for runoff and erosion, runoff is um, simply any type of water that moves over the Earth's surface. And there are different, um, different factors that may affect the amount of runoff. Um, the amount of rain. So if you have more rain, then you're going to have more runoff. Um, also, the type of um, vegetation as well, the type of soil. So like if the soil seems to avor, uh, um, absorb um, more water, then it's going to have less runoff. Um, also, the shape of the land, depending upon how steep it is. And then, of course, how people are using the land. Okay, so how do rivers form? First of all, all rivers are going to form in the mountains. A lot of people don't realize that, that every single river that has started um, in the world, they all start at the very top of mountains. And what is created is you first have to have these rills. Okay, now you could see these rills right here. And they're basically just, you can think of them as like a groove in the soil or like a tiny little pathway um, for that water to actually start to um, be able to travel, be able to move down. Okay, as that rill gets larger, it's larger, it's going to form what's called a gully. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way real quick. And so you can see like these rills are like a lot smaller and then it forms like a wider path and those are going to be called gullies. Okay, over here in this image, these are all just like kind of like little, little rills at this point. All right, and then gullies, as they become larger and larger, then they, be, then they form channels. Okay, and that channel in the soil, that's what carries the runoff after a rainstorm. Okay, so if you can look right here in the stream erosion, um, you can see the rills here, they're really small and thin, right? And then the rills will form into a gully and the gullies are gonna be like just wider pathways for that water to form. And then finally, those gullies will form into a stream. Okay, and that's what you might see along the banks um, near rivers, okay? So as gullies join together, they form these larger channels called streams. And then of course, as the stream forms, it erodes soil and rocks to make a, um, a channel or a much larger path. Okay, so when a stream first forms, its channel is going to be usually very narrow. Again, like I said, they all form near mountains, okay? And they tend to be much more narrow because think of it, it hasn't flown, flowed for a long time. So they're gonna be very narrow and steep. And over time, that, that stream is going to carry um, more rock and soil. And so that channel becomes much wider and deeper. And then finally, when that stream becomes longer and wider, that's when they eventually are called rivers, okay? So again, it starts with a rill then a gully, then stream, and then they those streams become channels, and then those channels, as they become wider and wider and wider, that's when you're gonna be getting a river. Okay, a stream that flows into another lake is called a tributary. And what I look, when I look, when I think of a tributary, I personally think of like, all of these that are flowing into these wider river channel right here. I compare it to like almost like the veins in your arms because um, it looks to me as if like if you're looking at the veins in your arms, you could see these tinier veins that are flowing into a larger vein and eventually that forms into an artery inside your body. 
um, you can also see it here. So like you have the main Amazon, um, the Amazon, but you have all these tiny little, little other um, smaller streams that are flowing into the main river. And those, those streams are called tributaries. Again, these are all vocabulary words that you're gonna have to become familiar with, okay? So these river systems are divided into an area called a watershed. And a watershed is a very large drainage basin in an area of the land that is drained by the water system, okay? The largest watershed in the United States is called the Mississippi, all right? And here, like for example, here is a huge watershed, okay? The watershed or a drainage basin, those are both the same, uh, a synonym, okay? It means the same thing, is it's the land that all those rivers are flowing through. Eventually, all of these watersheds will flow into an ocean, okay? So rivers always start at the mountain and they flow into the ocean, always, 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 okay? Um, we have a number of large watersheds in our, in our state, I mean, excuse me, in the United States, and they're all divided by mountains, okay? So if you're thinking about like in a larger scale, you, you're gonna have, you have the huge United States, and then within the United States, you're gonna have different watersheds and they're separated by mountain, like, like for example, um, like the Chattahoochee, uh, excuse me, the, the Ch um, I just lost my train of thought. The, um, uh, for example, like the Blue Ridge, okay? Those mountains are gonna, or the Appalachian Mountains, thank you, okay, that's what I was trying to say. Um, they might be separated by mountain ranges um, and that's what separates the watersheds. Okay, look at this picture right here, okay? All of the pink is actually the Mississippi watershed. Like I said, it's the largest watershed in the United States, okay? Depending upon how, what color they are is actually a different watershed. Um, but if you notice, they all end up in the ocean, whether it be in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific, they're all gonna end up in the ocean. Okay, so, um, we're gonna talk about how a stream, what stream erosion is, okay? So depending upon how that stream erodes, it's influenced by three different factors. One of which is called gradient, meaning the elevation. Discharge has to do with the amount of water that a stream or river carries, and then load. Load tends to be what's actually being carried. You can think of it like the load of laundry would be like all of the clothes in the laundry basket a load of a, of a stream would be all of the rocks and materials that are carried in the, load, uh, in the river or in the stream, okay? So gradient, again, has to do with how steep it is. Discharge has to do with how much water is flowing through that stream. And then load is what's actually being carried, okay? So in another example, you could think of it as, um, if say you have a really, really steep gradient and you had a huge flood, and the load is very light, then that erosion by that stream is gonna happen much faster. All right, so a river, you, I always compare it to like the life of an adult, okay? They don't, all rivers, they don't just start out as, you know, these old rivers, right? They start out, if they're in the mountain or depending where, where they are, they will start by, they, they will start out as a youthful river, okay? Youthful river are more deep, and again, they usually are typically found in the mountain areas because they're just starting, just like a youth, right? Like a, like a youth of a child or something. Um, as that gradient becomes less, then you're gonna have a more mature river. And in a mature river, those rivers are gonna become wider and it's not gonna be as steep. Um, you're still gonna be able to have a lot of erosion going on, but it's gonna be, um, not as much, okay? And then finally you have an old river. An old river is like, think of an old person, okay? They're not gonna move, it's not gonna move as fast. You're gonna have less erosion um, and there's gonna be lots of curves, okay? Okay, so if you're just looking at here, there are some images over here, like this would be an example of a youthful river, okay? And they're very like, you might have some waterfalls and some rapids, the water's moving very quickly. In a mature river, you have more bends, okay? These bends are called meanders. To me, they kind of look like snakes, all right? 
And if you're looking at this and you see these meanders, then you know that you're looking at more of like a mature river where it's starting to slow down um, and it's starting to curve and like it's at its prime. Like, you know, those are, you, you may even think of like the Chattanooga River is kind of like that, Chattahoochee River, excuse me, Chattahoochee River is like that where it's more mature. And then you can have like an old river. And I always think of like uh, New Orleans in Louisiana where they have like the swamps. There you're gonna have a lot of flat floodplains. Floodplain is where um, the land can easily become flooded because of the amount of rain and because it's very, very flat. If it's flat and that soil becomes saturated, then you um, will end up having a flood. And so these are gonna be called old rivers. Okay, we're going to skip this because you really don't need to know about rejuvenated rivers at this point. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and this is where we're going to start out for the next one. So now we're going to get into really the more important part that's going to be very important for your, um, for your test. Okay, and a lot of vocabulary words are here. So I'm going to stop here and then I'll pick up, pick up um, after this.